Hey there, guys, with the spooky season here. It's time for the waifu shirt to be retired. And now we have a new limited edition item, one of our nicest. A poster, a special Halloween poster featuring almost every character in our comic with some fantastic horror icons. So you can pick it up exclusively in our store, or if you guys want, through the Patreon. But I'd say get it through the store. Look at how nice this is. I actually have a copy myself, and it's really good. And if that's not your style, we also have cute little stickers. We have the comic book itself, at least issue one, and more coming. So guys, check out our shop for lots of great things, and let's get back to the game. Hey guys, welcome back to What a Legend. Let's continue, shall we? Um... Okay, what are we doing here, Lana? We're spying on Hammerdick, of course. Are we? Do you see that window? That's the archive rooms. Oh, awesome, Lana. Let's peep through it. And risk being seen by anyone who's passing the front dungeons or up to the castle? Yeah, I see no problem. You're kind of stupid, Anon. What are we doing here, then? Go and stand against the other wall of the office and give me a leg up. The wall without any windows? Yes, nobody will see us there. Okay, but we still need a window if we want to see what Hammer Dick's doing. Do I ask? Do as I ask, and I'll show you a little secret about that office. Okay. What's my room, bitch? Curious, I leaned against the wall, bent my knee a little, and clasped my hands together, ready to give Lana a leg up. Dropping her staff and removing her hood, she came and held my shoulders for support. And putting her feet on my hands, climbed up. And reached one of the upper bricks of the wall. Revealing her beautiful nipple while doing so. This might not be the best time to say it, Lana. But I love that you never wear anything under your clothes. Focus, Anon, or you might drop me. There's a brick here that's loose. And if I find it, we'll be able to see inside this office. Take all the time you need, Lana. I'm good. Got it. Oh, no. I forgot they hung a painting in front of the hole. It's a pity, but I have to damage it. She poked her finger through the painting and gave herself a clear view of the inside. So, do you see anything? Hammerdick's here and alone. He's got his back to me and writing something. I see it, Anon. And yes, it's a runestone. Great! Shh. Whose was that? The people in the marketplace, no doubt. Anyhow, let me read the letter one last time before mailing it. My dear Vil, the torturing of the last golden bush is, is progressing according to the plan. She is resisting slightly, but I will break her soon enough. The gods have ordered have orders to deprive her of sleep, and I have them under control to ensure that my instructions are followed to the T. So, shh, I'll tell you later. Once the occasion, what, on one occasion, I thought she was finally ready to tell me how to reach the center of the maze. And I opened the door using the stone you inscribed for me. By the way, I am still in awe of your magical power. But alas, she only wanted to read my mind and find my weakness. Wait, why have I written that part? Kingville doesn't need to know about the slight embarrassment. I 
know you're extremely busy, and I am fully aware that reaching the center of the maze is only one of the many plans that occupy you. But I want you to know that you have a reliable ally in me, and I have every faith in your torture success, or in your future success, woo, and count the days until I come and kiss your majesty's hand in the Never Enough Palace. Your loyal friend and humble servant, Lord Hammerdick. P.S. Hugs and kisses, mwah mwah. Not bad, not bad. I am such a good writer. What every writer says to themselves. I need to, I need to rewrite, rewrite it one more time and remove the unnecessary bits, and then it's ready to be pigeoned. Lana put the brick back into the hole and came down. Stepping back and looking crestfallen. So, what did you learn about the runestone? That Hammerdick used it to open Lady Madeline's cell, exactly as we suspected. That's all. Thanks, Simone. Her tip saved us a lot of time. Yes, Anon, your new girlfriend was very helpful indeed. What's the matter, then? The gods have orders to not let Lady Mandolin sleep. That's how they're torturing her. Fuck. I mean, it's better than getting flogged or something, but still. We mustn't lose time, Anon. We need to devise a plan to get the runestone and then reach the cell. Okay, leave it to me, Lana. I'm good at coming up with plans. Is that so? Yeah, I often have situations like this when I have I have to think of a way, think my way out of a situation. Fuck it, I messed that up. All right, but don't take too long. It's time to think. Put your thinking caps on, kids. Hey. I found a photo. Awesome. Hope to look at that another day. Hammer Dick is torturing poor Madeline. I need to come up with a plan to steal the magical stone that opens her cell. It'll be awesome if I can come up with an effective and intelligent solution to impress Lana. Let's see, what's the best way to get the rune stone? Hammer Dick must keep that stone on him at all times. Perhaps we can pick his pocket as he passes on the street? To do that, we'll need to... Uh, excuse me, but I'm trying to think. I'm sorry, kiddo. I know thinking is your thing, but we don't have time for it. What? What do you mean, Lana? Thinking is an important part of my gameplay. We cannot afford missteps, Anon, and I have already seen the quality of your thinking. I think we can agree that your ideas are unorthodox. Remember when you dressed up like a sheep to slip past the guards? So what? It worked, didn't it? Eventually, on the third try, and that's not fast enough to give, given the circumstances. So I guess you want to do the thinking yourself? No, I'm simply going to say what's the best approach. You said that Hammerdick has a lot of work in his room, right? That's what I said. Good, so look up. Do you see that skylight? We'll enter the office through the night and wait until morning. Once Hammerdick arrives, we'll incapacitate him and take the runestone. And then we'll have the whole day to reach the dungeon and rescue Lady Madeline. Are you crazy? What if the whole day is not enough, especially with all the extra guards? And what the fuck do you mean by in incapacitate? Knock the fuck out, Anon. I'm not killing Simone's dad. That's our fastest solution, Anon. It'll be impossible to take the runestone as he, he's in the street, and infiltrating the castle is possible, but time-consuming. Okay, I have a better idea. We do the skylight thing. We do the skylight thingy, but do it as he's there in the office. You lower me with a rope, and I'll take the gemstone as he's sitting there. From his desk, right under his nose? Sure, I can do it. He's not going to be looking up. 
because he'll have his eyes fixed on the ground, looking at the golden coins at his feet. And when he goes to pick them up, I'll take the rune stone and you'll pull me up. That's possible, but very risky. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, in the worst case scenario, you'll have to come and rescue me as well. Just as long as I don't have to steal a fuck, steal the, as long as I don't have to steal fucking rune stones for it. Well, for your information, if you ever, if you're ever caught, I'll do everything I can to rescue you at once. No, Anon, if I'm ever caught, you run, run and stay far. Nonsense. I'll never leave my friends behind. Anyway, so we need a rope, huh? I saw one in the mansion, tied around a big-ass chest in the bedroom. We're right next to the marketplace, Anon. We can just buy a rope before doing the theft. Yeah, but we already have a rope, Lana. And one of my moms used to say you should never buy again what you already own. If we see it's not, it's no good, we'll come back here and buy whatever we need. I don't trust the mansion. It makes me feel uneasy. It's just an empty building. And I really want us to check out that place properly. We broke the curse for, of it together, after all. I didn't break the curse, you did. And I still don't know how. Yeah, but who made me come like mad, eh? You did. Let's go and get the rope. He's an idiot. Yep. Oh, not getting the hiccups again. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Oh, here we go. We went to the bedroom of the cursed mansion and stood in front of the big chest at the yep. at the foot of the bed. Here. All right, after a bit of a break, I'm back. No more hiccups. This is the rope I meant. But that's an elvish rope. What is an elvish rope doing here? I don't know. Do you think it'll be suitable? It'll be usable? Oh, yes. These are rare. But Anon, that means the owner of this place was probably an elf. Now that is interesting. You're such a hypocrite, Lana. Until a few moments ago, you didn't like this place, and as soon as we find an elvish shoestring in it, it's suddenly of interest. God, you're an idiot. I still don't like the cursed mansion. I only said that because I wonder who could have... Uh, never mind, why am I explaining myself to you? That's okay, Lana. Nobody's perfect, not even a sexy elf princess like you. You got that part right. Hey, look. So many clothes, no? And all of them are women's? Whoever this mansion belonged to, she sure liked wearing sexy clothes. No, these clothes are totally different si are totally different sizes. Look at this dress, it's pixie sized. Oh, it's adorable. Fuck, you're right. So maybe this was a dude's room? And one with an unusually active sex life? I got one of the I got one of the dresses and held it in front of Lana's body. This dress will look really good on you. That's a corset, man. That's not a dress. That's too fancy for me, Anon. That's a corset. It's just part of a dress. Mm. Yep. Nah, you're a princess, Lana. Nothing will look too fancy on you. She hesitated for half a second, then held the dress in front of her. Why not? It's been years that I don't wear this style of clothes. So how do I look? Irresistible, of course. Although I'd rather you took off the rags. Oh, and one more thing. I reached behind her head and pulled her hairband. There. Now I'm completely crazy for you. Are you? I didn't realize it at first, because we were both laughing, but when I looked at her, I saw what I had done. In opening her hair, I accidentally caused her eye patch to fall. And in a few seconds that it took for her to notice and put it back on, I saw, an, I saw what lay behind it. It was both shocking and scary, a milky-colored eye. 
shattered into a hundred pieces and looking at me with surprise, anger, and perhaps a tinge of fear. She covered it quickly. I'm sorry. By the way, I just want to go back and show that again. This is a really nice... I love when games do this kind of thing. So I want to once again thank Exus Cumming who told me to play this game. He has very good taste. He's also, for those that don't know, he's the guy who made Orange Trainer and Paprika Trainer. You guys should play them. They're up for free. Go to his Patreon. Just Google them. I'm sorry. Also, Google these guys. It was an accident. Relax, kiddo. I'm the one who's sorry you had to see that. What? May I ask, uh, what happened? Magic. Fucking magic. She went and stood in front of the mirror and looked at, at her image. Are you okay? Whether she heard my question or not, I lost my eye because of my gift. You know what gifts are, don't you? The magical abilities that some members of older families are born with. Like Madeline and Serena's magic, I know. Yes, the golden bush and never enough gifts are celebrated and powerful. I was born with a lesser ability, a useless magic that must have been in our bloodline. What ability? The ability to see ghosts. Hey, that's a cool ability. Ghosts? You're kidding, right? It wasn't as impressive as te teleporting, conjuring things up, or transforming into a human, but I loved it all the same. I had many friends who no one except me could see. Because having, go having the ghost eye is rare, very rare. And what's more, my father always asked my opinion on different matters because he said that my gift marked me for ancient knowledge. I think that's why Bill did it. He was jealous of that supposed knowledge everyone spoke of. I remember the day it happened. We got blurry and shit tan on, even though it was many years ago. I had gone to the music room to watch the sunrise. Used, I used to like that room because my ghost eye would always light with magic when I was there. Near my friends. A troop of ghostly performers who lived in that gallery. And always came and played whatever song I wanted. On that morning, though, they stopped shortly after they had begun and went and stood farther back in the corner. They always did that when Ville was around. And he had silently crept in. And standing near me was gazing at me with a strange expression on his face. What's the matter, Ville? You look pale. Were you conversing with spirits? I don't know a voice for him yet. Give me time. I was, and also listening to their beautiful song while enjoying the view. I, I'm going to make her voice a little different in the past. Song? The things you could do with your gift, and you use it to listen to songs. I want to tell him it was none of his business how I spent my time, but he didn't give me the chance. Lifting up his hand, he uttered a terrible spell that blackened his fingers and pinned me to place, gagging my throat so I couldn't even scream. At first, I, oh, sorry, at first I thought he was going to kill me, but in a voice shaking with excitement, he told me his real motives. I will take your gift, dear sister, and put it to better use. Don't resist if you want it to be over quickly. Then he directed his magic toward my face, and I felt my eye, my ghost eye, the eye that would always light with magic when spirits were near, get pulled out of its socket. And someone's fucking calling. Gotta love scammers. And shatter. His spell did not work on gift magic. He didn't manage to steal my ghost eye. Merely destroyed it.
fuck? The king was furious, and even though he was old and Vil was his heir, he threw him out of the palace. Anyway, that's the story. I'm so sorry, Lana. It must have been painful to lose your eye and your friends, and to go through all that. Uh, yeah. But I'm fine, Anon. Vil will pay for what he did. We will first mess up whatever he's planning with Lady Mad, and then I will personally make sure he's stopped. Huh, I like your foolish confidence. I'm serious. He'll pay for what he did to you. I know you mean it. And thanks for that. But Vil's way out of our reach ma but Vil's out of our reach magically, and I've gotten used to being blind. Can't anything be done for your eye, though? I mean, isn't there a cure or anything? No, the eye is destroyed, and there's no cure. The maze confirmed that. The maze? The same maze that Vil wants to reach the center of? The very same. They say the maze knows the answer to every question, but only a golden bush can reach the center and converse with it mentally. Even though they're prohibited from using it for anything other than protection of the realm. That's why I came to this city in the first place, to convince Madeline's great-great-grandfather to enter the maze for me and ask about my eye. But he refused to do it. And did Madeline do it? On the day she became city ruler, she entered the maze, and among other things, she also asked about my problem. And what did the maze say? Nothing. It said time will cure it, or some other nonsense cliché like that. What they say about the maze is all bull. Whatever magic it once had, it is now too old and twisted to be used to useful to anyone. Just like my eye. If it is bullcrap, then why has Vil kept Madeline in a cell to help him reach the center of it? But still, Lady Madeline did it for me. She didn't have to, and it was against the tradition, but she did it because she cared for me. And I failed to protect her when she needed me. I will rescue her, Lana. This is not over yet, and we have a plan to get the key to her cell. We can go to the city right now if you want. No, Hammerdick must have left the cast must have left the castle already and taken the rune stone with him. I'll keep the rope and meet you tomorrow behind the city hall, and then we'll steal the rune stone and open up the cell. Yeah, sure. We'll do it tomorrow. Night Anon. And thanks. Hey, come on, any time. Damn, poor Lana had it rough. No wonder she doesn't trust magic. It reminds her of her asshole brother. And perhaps it also makes her sad a little because she remembers how happy she was when she had her gift. Fuck, Phil. I feel like spending many years studying magic and doing to him what he did to Lana. That'd be cool, no? Impossible, since I don't like studying. But still, I can fantasize about being powerful and avenging Lana's eye. Anyway, that's all I can do for Madeline tonight. Tomorrow morning, I'll go behind the city hall and steal the damned rune stone. Okay, so before we actually go to sleep, let's see if there's anything we can actually do at night. Do -do -do, do -do 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 -do. That one, I think. Uh, see, there's one. Woodcutter in the afternoon. At night. So let's go to Holly's. Now, I did say we were going to um, only do one story a night. You know, only one at a time. But I feel like we can go ahead and vi visit Holly and stuff and maybe do, like, ones that when we're just kind of waiting for time to kill. I feel like that would work. Plus, everyone will be happy. What was it? What's Holly doing here again? Is she talking with someone? Don't worry, Mittens. Everything's gonna be fine. Bah. He's so cute. He's adorable. I'm sorry. No, 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 go back. Bah. Dang it! <laughs> I just want you all to know that joke was worth it. Also, I need to reset. This is why I need to get a stream deck. It's something I've actually been kind of 
I, I, I really want to get one because then it makes doing some things a little easier. Bah. That ugly matchmaker almost made Grandpa sell the field, and we would probably have sold you too. But that's over now. You're safe and with me, and nobody's gonna bother us anymore. Bah. He's a cute little lamb. Look at that. Anon's a good friend. Oh, she's talking about me. It's nice having someone normal around here. Not like the rest of the fucking villagers. Bah. He's got no chances against me, though. Nobody's ever won me in wrestling. Damn. So he'll have to get used to being a friend only. Hey, don't lick my legs. They're super ticklish. Mitten, stop! <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know my muscles go all weak when you lick that and it part of my legs. Please stop. Uh-oh. You know I hate that, dummy. It's my only weakness. Yes. Let's go home. Grandpa must be asleep already. I think I have it. I'm going to challenge Holly tomorrow. Let's hope I'm right. By the way, you guys did a vote, and it looks like a lot of people want me to continue doing, um, doing the, um, I remember the word for the game, the, the letter, so I probably will be continuing that soon. So we're going to head over back over here. And that's where we're going to call it, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me for another episode. Don't forget to check out my other series and all the other fun stuff along with my second channel, Sinfully Pure, where you guys can see lots of great longer videos. And check me out on Twitch. I'm trying to, he to reach partner. So come and join me and help me out. Thank you guys. See you all next time. Bye.